Hi everyone, we're back at the piano and I'm sure a lot of you are always wondering what piece can I learn next? What's a good piece? What's a good piece? And I think I found one for you. This is in the RCM Celebration Series Book 4. We're going through these books looking at some, but not all of the, all of the pieces, just uh, the really fun ones. And this one is called Reflections by Dennis Alexander. I love this composer that they've put uh, rather generously through these books and his pieces are always awesome and you know uh, how can anyone hate this piece right <laughs> have it. So let's talk about this piece a little bit and some things to get you started a little bit on this piece, which is from, especially from adults, book one. I'm happy they tell me where all these things are from in these, in these books. So there's di many different ways of playing this. So often talking about shapes here, I guess we can talk a bit about, about technique, right? So, da, 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 da because you have a, a really nice wheel here. So my big question here is, should we be going crescendo here? And then we have that. Or should we go ya da 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 di? Because that's diminuendo. Because it's the tail of our phrase of our micro phrase right it's not the tail of the four bar phrase it's actually the middle so depends how you see it so here we have two options number one crescendo to that C or decrescendo Now the crescendo seems to make more sense to me, but you know, it depends on how you play. If you crescendo, make sure that this is more and you come back down. So this is louder, no matter what you do, this should be more and resolve down to here, right? And then we have this crescendo. Sometimes it helps in these kind of things to really follow the bass. Because we have twice, but we have and that helps you connect those four bars together, which can be challenging. Now we have this one, mezzo piano, with a crescendo second one mezzo forte so here we go mezzo piano here comes the crescendo and now this one a little louder so do a diminuendo here not written but do it anyway 17 
sure all these things coming back to technique. So, see how we don't do this with just the fingers? If I do it with just the fingers, if I use the, the wheel, it's not to just, technique is not just to be have better motor skills. It's to actually be able to communicate and get something into the instrument because it's very different to transfer weight than with your body than with just your knuckles, you know, your fingers. We use that weight. G, G, now F sharp, and then F natural. That's kind of funny pedal at the end, but we have the third and the thumb in the right hand. We definitely want to hear that. So this is a piece you can have a lot of rubato in it, as you can, you know, hear the uh, when I played it in the beginning, I did a lot, a lot of rubato. That's very appropriate for this kind of thing. So you can explore that, and you know, let uh, the idea is to feel free, so that you're free to, you know, take time to express some some notes that you want to uh, say in a little different way. In the same way, if you're speaking. You say a, a particular word in a more important way. It's the same way with, with music. It's like every note is a syllable. So there's some notes which are more important than others. And that's not always a, a determined set thing. However, while you're being free in everything, your, your other consideration should be that however you're doing those rubatos, it should be coherent. It should be bringing out the way the piece is built together to show the listener that this is the end of an eight bar phrase. Now we're slowing down. This is the end of this section. You know, this is the middle of this section. I'm not going to slow down or, or maybe I'm not going to die down, but I'll expand and continue my crescendo to, to go over that arch in the middle of the phrase. So these are some things to consider. So you have, Rubato and that freedom, and then make it as coherent as you can. When you come to my master class, we'll, we'll work on that together. We haven't had a little master class in a little while. Obviously, right now is not exactly the time where we can do that. So I would like to be doing live master classes, and we'll see how you know how the, how the the whole uh, uh, pandemic situation evolves. Since uh, this is only May, early May. Uh, 2020. Stay tuned and in the next video we are going to talk about more of these pieces from other levels as well so send me your fa most favorite pieces from the RCM celebration series so we can look at them and see you in the next video. Take care. Happy practicing.